Namaste. My name is Todd Norian, and I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga. Welcome to class. And just a reminder, please share the experience. Anyone you know who's feeling a little stressed out or needs a little inspiration, please share this, this uh, link with them, this experience. And a reminder that I'm currently teaching a five-session series, Blankets of Grace, Practices for Sound Sleep and Deep Rest. So we had our first session yesterday. It was fabulous. And uh, it, there's still capacity to, uh, to join. And then you can get the recordings. So um, I hope you'll join me with that. And then please join the Ashaya community. Go to ashayayoga.com and uh, join this great group of people. And you'll receive all the updates and inspirations in my blog and uh, newsletter and all that. So I hope you'll join us. I want to talk a little bit about inner peace because this is practices for inner peace and especially during this time. And, you know, what's not really spoken about is the need for endurance during inner peace. Like, how do you get to inner peace? And this idea of, of learning how to build our endurance. And what is endurance? Well, endurance is our ability to withstand hardship or adversity. Endurance is the power that's needed uh, to get through, the dictionary calls it prolonged suffering. And I thought, yeah, this is kind of like that. And then I thought, you know, the marathon runners, you know, uh, when I was running marathons, I, I just loved the endurance practice. In fact, from a yogic perspective, I did a, a yoga endurance a workout routine when I was doing triathlons, all these things years ago. And I really loved it. And it wasn't so much about pushing. Like I think endurance, um, what's missing in the common definition of endurance is that I think what makes endurance last is a kind of softness and openness as you approach endurance. Because when you endure and you're pushing, like in a yoga pose, and you push, you're going to burn out. So... Conscious endurance, and there's a Sanskrit term, it's called karma nadi, is our capacity to build strength inside and to create space all around us for us to persist. Now, what makes that possible for us is why would you want to endure? And as I contemplated that, well, I want to endure because I value life. And I want to endure because I want to experience the present moment, the miracle of the present moment. I want to experience love. I want to experience the magic of a sunrise. I want to hear the sound of a mountain stream. Like, these are all things that I'm, I'm starting to value so much more that it's, it's really valuing what it means to be alive and then to thrive, to have a life that is is so deeply integrated. And I think all that takes endurance to be able to get through. And then we're, we're building our strength. So I wanted to, to bring that out. We're gonna have a, a wonderful practice of endurance. So I'm gonna challenge you, but remember, it's not about pushing. So even as we're working through our poses, um, I'm going to remind us all to breathe, to relax, and try to make space all around the experience, and that's and that's how we build it. Okay? Um, and to begin, uh, let's chant an invocation. So I posted a, a PDF um, on Tuesday that has the Shanti mantra on it. So if you have access to that, get it. Or if you know it, chant. You can also just listen. And then I thought we would do another chant to Ganesh or Ganapati, who is the uh, Lord of of uh, the remover of obstacles. And uh, what a great time to get some support to remove obstacles. Take a comfortable seat. Close your eyes and bring your palms in front of your heart. Tune in. Find your breath. Breathe into your heart. And set your intention for your practice. May we develop a kind of conscious endurance to be able to soften, remember why we would want to endure, 
And it always goes back to, why are you here? What do you want out of the experience of your life? And keep it simple. Well, I just want to experience my vitality, my health. I'd like to recognize the miracle of everyday life. Whether there is some adversity happening right now or not, there's always going to be some challenge. How are you responding? And then breathe into the deep center of the heart that's filled with inner peace. These are practices for inner peace. And may we touch that place inside that is still, that is unconditional, that is judgment-free, and that is filled with love and light. And let's offer that out into the world as we chant Om three times, and then we'll chant the Shanti mantra. And then I'll, I'll teach the next mantra after that. Oh. to the next chant are Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om Gam G-A-M. That's the, the seed sound for Ganesh or the, the Bij mantra for Ganapati. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. That's like the whole elephant in a point. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. And Ganesh is the, the lord of auspicious beginnings. Um, he's kind of like the good luck charm. But it's also about how to endure. You know, we want to develop the strength like an elephant uh, to endure, to be consistent. Endurance also means ceaselessness. You know, to not let go of our dream, of our vision, of this uh, beautiful experience. Okay, so here we go. Call and response. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. I forgot to tell the rest of the chant. Om Gam Ganapataye. Ganapataye is uh, the uh, uh, invocation to Ganesh. Ganapataye Namaha. Namaha means I honor. Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha. Om Gam Om Gam Ganapata Ye Namaha 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 Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha Om 
Dam Gana Pataye Namaha Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha We chant all together Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha 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 Om Gam Gana Pataye standing position. Come to the front of your mat. Inhale, right arm up. Just make a big circle. Inhale up. Exhale. Right arm back. Inhale. Lift. With endurance, hug your muscles to the bones. Exhale. Inhale. Soften your skin. Then engage. Endurance comes really from a very conscious place. Remember why you want to endure. What for? What are you going to do with it? Nice deep breaths. Enjoy your breath. Take your left arm now. Inhale, left arm forward. Stretch it up and all the way back. You can turn, watch your hand as it goes back. Inhale, nice deep breaths. Engage muscles of the arms with endurance. Think of endurance as the, our ceaseless desire to thrive, to not let go of it, to hang in there, even during hardship, even during uncertainty. That's the time when endurance is necessary. Inhale, both arms up, halfway. Pull the head of the arm bones back with endurance. Also, there's a certain alignment. When you are aligned, you will have natural endurance. So, misalignment is the shoulders are all slumped forward. Here, bring your arms down. Here we go, slump asana pose. When I taught in Germany, they called it schlump asana. Okay. So, look, there's no endurance here. So you have to remember why you're here. Lift your heart, lift your ribs, and now take the head of the arm bones back. Arms halfway up. 
Side ribs long, pull the head and the arm bones back, and now stretch up. And what's interesting is when you align with endurance, you have more space, you're more free. Exhale, release, arms out to the side. Inhale, right arm up again. This time, bend your elbow. Hold the right elbow with your left hand. And even as you pull your elbow back, I want you to resist. Press your elbow into your hand. And notice that when you do that little resistance, your armpit hollows. Magic. And stretch your upper arm. Okay, feet parallel, keep the arm going, and then do a little crescent. Oh yeah, thighs back, tailbone in, breathe. I don't really wanna say endure the suffering, uh, but endure the suffering, and breathe. Now from your pelvis, root through your feet, and inhale, lengthen through your spine, and go just a little bit more. Remember, when you soften, then hug in, you have a much more capacity not to strain, not to over effort. Root your right foot down, inhale, come up. Switch, left elbow back. Resist, armpit hollows. Another thing that helps endurance, you can ask any endurance athlete, is breath. In fact, the breath becomes the way that you endure. Thighs back, tailbone in, breathe. When you exhale, remember why you're enduring. What do you appreciate about life? I just had this image of a mountain stream. I want to hear the sound of the stream. Maybe I'll go outside today. And then arc, root your left foot down, crescent arc, armpits back. Breathe. And then I think what helps people endure is that you make the endurance enjoyable. There's a certain edge, it's the edge between agony and ecstasy. And we breathe into it. If you're struggling a bit, breathe into it, try to soften and see how much further you can go with it. But as soon as you force, it's like game over. Root your left foot down, inhale, come up. So we have to discern between making a conscious effort and then forcing ourselves. All right, excellent. Feet parallel, take a block, if you have a block or a thick book and place it between your thighs, feet parallel, hip distance. Squeeze, endure. Thighs back, tailbone in. Now get a sense of just the right amount of squeeze to the block. You could grip it, but then your gluteal muscles will just get really tight and that'll jam your spine. So open to a bigger energy, hug the block, and it's a hug it's full, 360 degrees around the legs, muscles, hug bones. Then thighs back, and keeping your thigh bones back, draw your tailbone in. Inhale, stretch your arms up, reach. Exhale, sweep your arms out to the side, fold forward. Keep your toes up. Okay to bend your knees a little bit, take the edge off, and then inhale, Heart forward with the longing to thrive in life. Exhale, bow, increase endurance. Inhale, extend your life. From the strength of the endurance now, you can serve. Exhale, bow. Inhale, draw in deeply to your center. And exhale, bow. Yoga really does help to recharge your batteries. Continue a few more rounds. We access the universal source of energy, which is like tapping into the endless stream of abundance. And then your energy increases and you become the 
ever ready battery. Good. Root through your feet, sweep your arms out to the side and inhale. Come up, remove the block. Keep the actions in your legs. Stretch your arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, downward dog pose. Bend your knees and hug your shins to the middle. Turn your thighs in and lift your sitting bones. Look at your hands. Make sure your fingers are, are parallel, one, with the, uh, one hand with the other hand. So one hand is not further forward. And then claw with endurance all ten finger pads. Then press the roots of your fingers down. Pull from your hands up into your heart. Endure. Instead of crashing your energy down into your wrists, I want you to pull up from your hands all the way up into your heart. Lift your arm bones. Try to find your inner armpit edge and lift that up. But keep your heart soft. It's the perfect action to practice endurance without forcing. Keep your shoulder blades firm to your back. Endurance, our capacity to withstand hardship, to withstand challenge. But also know you can come down at any time you need to. We're going to hold this for a bit. You're going to get tired. So that's when you can work on endurance. Breathe. Then from your heart, push down through your hands. And from your heart, lift through your back. And begin to root the base of your shins back. Your heels probably won't go all the way down. But press the base of your shins back. And then isometrically pull your big toe ball mound and inner heels back. But widen your thighs at the same time. Don't let your knees cave in. Inner edges of your feet back. And then widen your knees. Well done. Exhale. Right foot forward. Lunge. Come onto your left hand. Sweep your right arm up. Just do a little twist. Breathe. And then explore the stretch with your arm. Bring your right arm over your head. Oh. Let out any sounds. I won't be able to hear it. But actually, I have a secret microphone on, and I can hear you. Not really. Stretch up. Uh. Then place both hands on the floor. Now, scissor your legs, lift your fingers an inch. Now you'll feel the endurance in your legs. I want you to really hug, scissor your legs to the middle. This is not easy. You can see I'm wavering here. So we hug, and we start to build strength. Now pull up from your feet to your pelvis, and then lift your torso upright. Take your left thigh up toward the sky, sink your right hip down more, so it's this this action, there's all these contrasts. Put your left hand on the back of your left thigh. So your left thigh lifts up, right arm up. Breathe. The warrior lunge, the warrior pose. This isn't exactly Virabhadrasana, it's a Virabhadrasana lunge pose, a variation. But Virabhadrasana was the warrior and the warrior of the heart to endure, to engage with life, and bring your best self forward. Left arm up, stretch. Bring your right hand back to the left thigh. Push your thigh up into your hand. Just a little twist. Arch back a little bit more. Put your left hand behind your head, elbow in, and then press your head back into your hand like a headrest, armpit back, then stretch up, exhale, sweep it down to the floor, step back downward dog, make sure your right leg goes back with you, don't leave it, breathe, endurance, 
You're building strength right now. Lift your armpits up, don't sag. Melt the heart. Exhale, left foot forward now. Lean onto your right hand, stretch up and twist. You will find in the sequence these little pockets of repose, like right now. This is not so hard. So you re rejuvenate here. But I'm not going to give you much of a rest. I'm just saying, this is how you get through this class. Oh, he's talking. I can just kind of hang out a little bit. Explore range of motion with your left arm. So you can bring your left arm over your head. Turn your heart up to the sky more. Breathe. The breath becomes your friend to build endurance. Exhale. Bring your hand down. And now, lift your both hands, scissor your legs. There's a kind of persistence in endurance, but make the persistence more conscious. Soften your skin, even though you're working hard. Keep a little bit of space. Then, inhale, come up, hands to your hips. Lift your right thigh more to the sky, left hip toward the floor. Put your right hand on the back thigh and push your leg up into your hand. Breathe, pull your tailbone in, left arm is up. Do the best you can inside of each posture. Hug your legs, squeeze the legs. Why? Because you just, you wanna thrive, you wanna endure so you can be present for the miracle moments of life. To be present for a loved one. And if you're holed up with your family and you can't get out, that takes a lot of endurance. So hang in there. Right arm up. Now twist left hand back to the right thigh and push your right leg up into your hand. Build strength now. We are the beings who can endure anything. We've been around for a really long time and we've been successful. So we will continue to be because we can adapt, but also we can endure. Stretch. Now right hand behind your head, elbow in. Press your head back into your hand, headrest. But lift your elbow up. And then both arms up. Stretch. And just before your legs fall off, exhale, fold forward. I'm doing it too. Plank. And there's a little repose here. I was working your legs like crazy. Now the legs are fine. Now I'm working your arms. We're just going to move suffering around the body. So endure. Thighs back, tail in. Okay, knees down. Another little repose. Half push up. Exhale down. Inhale, come up. Exhale down. Nice and slow. Inhale up. Claw your pads and roots. It's your hand. Keep your, the head of your arm bones back. And we want to make this movement smooth. So we're oiling the joint. Oil the joint. Good. Exhale all the way down. Toes straight back. Hug your shins. Make your legs strong. Filled with endurance. And then inhale. Come up. Hug your hips. Hug the muscles all around the low back. So you have no pain at all in your low back. I want you to get all the strain in your legs. Put the pressure in your legs. Heart is soft, shoulders back, come up. Lift your throat, palate back, occiput up. Exhale down. Inhale again. This time, crawl your right knee forward, salamander, and look over your right shoulder. Flex your left heel, push your left foot to the back edge of your mat. Lean your left ribs forward. I want you to get a really deep stretch here. This is the 
the QL, quadratus lumborum, right at the waistline. A little bit in the back, you got some abdominal stretch as well. And so as exhale, come on down. Inhale, come up, crawl, left knee forward, flex your right foot. And now I'm working your shoulders, stay with it. Push your right foot back, lean your right ribs forward, and then grow your ribs to grow your endurance. And then exhale, come on down, clasp your hands behind your back. Inhale, hug your legs, and then locust. So lift your shoulders up, lift your chest, stretch your shoulders back, and breathe. Use your breath and find your own way to endure this pose. It's not so challenging, but given everything we've been doing so far, there's, there's, there's quite an edge in the, even the simplest pose. Exhale down. Place your hands. Come on to all fours. Go to downward dog pose. Inhale your right leg. Up, lift the inner right thigh. Bend your right knee up and over, one-legged doggy pee pose. Root the base of your left shin. Adho Mukha Ekapada Pipiasana. Stretch. Endure. Then exhale, big lunge forward. And then walk your hands over toward the left. I'm just going to switch around here. Right knee is bent. Square your left foot. Now you squeeze your legs toward the middle. And then let that squeeze be what, what lifts you up. Legs full of endurance and strength. Then stretch your arms out to the sides from warrior two. Right leg is bent. Hug your legs to the middle. Thighs back, tailbone in. Move your right knee a little bit more toward the right. Away from the, away from the big toe. It's gonna fall in towards the big toe. Now, you want more endurance there. Your left thigh is gonna fall forward. No, endurance, you keep the left thigh back. Actually, both thighs go back. Kind of does it. Reverse warrior two. You get really good at noticing where the repose is. Like this is not that difficult of a pose. And so you, you, you're gonna gain a little rest here because more is coming. Inhale, come up, stretch your right leg straight. With endurance, pull your kneecaps up, hold, and then exhale, hinge. Left hand to your hip, bring your right hand over to the left. Come down to the floor on a block, triangle. Take your thighs back, tail in, then move your right hand to the outside of the right ankle. Inner rotate your thighs. Take your, the um, left side of your belly toward the left thigh. So your belly's gonna turn in and go into the uh, inner thigh, left thigh as you turn your heart up to the sky. So think of two energy swirls. There's two stripes. The heart obviously lifts up. It's going from left, sorry, from right to left. And then left arm goes up. But the belly counteracts that and goes down. So we could say navel pulls in and turns down toward the back leg. Heart turns up, shoulder blades strong. Extend your left arm over the ear. Nice deep breaths. From your pelvis now, push your legs strong. From your pelvis, endure through the heart. Let's live a long time. It's quality, not quantity. Okay, now look down. Left hand to your hip, bend your right knee, step forward with your left foot. We're going to push up. We're going to Ardha Chandrasana. Ready? 
go. And the right hand is gonna come up 10 inches in front and two inches to the right of the little toe, 10 and two. And then hug your right leg strongly, pull up from the foot to the pelvis. Both legs hug. Endurance, thighs back, tailbone in. And then push out from your pelvis, just extend your bones long. Endurance, use your breath. Okay, switch your arms, keep your legs steady. Don't let your left leg drop, try to keep it up. Just switch your arms, right arm up. That's a really good stretch here. Okay. Switch your arms again. Pull your left knee in, hold your left foot if you can. Here's where we'll get into a little bit of the bus stop yoga. So you get off at the last stop. If this one isn't where your home is, don't go. But if you can, then lift your knee up so it's at least parallel with your hips, slightly higher. And then take your shoulders back, left shoulder back. Push your foot into your hand. Really good quad stretch. Endurance of the right leg. Okay, for those that can stay with it, switch your hands. Then hold your left foot with your right hand. the reverse Ardha Chandra Chapasana pose. Okay, exhale, let that go. Step back three or three and a half feet. Scissor your legs into Parsvottanasana and then bow. Right hip back, left hip forward more. Pull your right foot back, bow. Go into the stretch. For just a little bit more stretch and endurance, walk your hands over to the right. Both hands. Hold. This is the time when you just really want to stop, isn't it? <laughs> okay, endurance. Come on, hang in there. You could back up and go to a previous pose here. There's two more parts to this. Turn your back foot all the way to the right. You're on the little toe blade of your foot, and you scissor. So you turn big pigeon toe, left foot. Turn toward the right, scissor your legs. As you scissor, if you feel enough stability and balance, then go to Ashvatasana and place your hands on your ankles. Breathe. Well done. Exhale, release. Step back, downward dog pose, and rest in downward dog. Full, deep breaths. You got this. Okay. We have one more side. Inhale, left leg high. Hold. Root the base of the right shin back. Bend your uh, left knee and bring it up and over. One leg doggy pee pose. Stretch. These are real bells from the Chidambaram temple in India. Okay, exhale. Lunge forward. Square your right foot. Walk your hands a little bit over to your right. And then scissor your legs and pull up from your feet to the pelvis. And let that lift your arms and your torso. Come up warrior two. Bend your left knee a little bit more. And here's where you hug. Take your thighs back. And avoid right hip forward, so keep your right thigh back. And avoid left knee uh, toward the right, toward the big toe. So you squeeze the left knee back and also take the right thigh back. 
from your pelvis now push through your feet from your pelvis lengthen through your spine now through your fingertips the warrior look out over the left fingers endurance find your breath and then go to the reverse warrior and this one is a little softer but there's still quite a lot of endurance needed and plus now you know what's coming so breathe into it one breath at a time one moment at a time you can do this and then inhale slowly come up stretch your left leg straight and pull your kneecaps up best you can and now hinge from the left hip right hand to your hip go off to the right side stick your butt way back that will free up your spine we want the stretch in the belly of the hamstring muscle not the knee then draw your tailbone in and bring your left hand to the outside of the left shin or ankle you can put it up on a block as needed now tailbone stronger in the uh, right side of your belly turns toward the right inner thigh lift your left sorry right arm up and lift your heart up toward the sky but the low belly turns toward the back leg. The upper back and the heart lift toward the sun. Then from your pelvis, root your legs. Let your light shine. Pelvis through your spine, through your arms, through your head. This longing to thrive, to live fully, to fulfill your destiny. Stretch your right arm over the head. Reach, stretch. And now look down, bend your left knee, step your back foot forward. And then you push off with the back foot. Your left hand comes 10 and 2. Balance, left hand, left foot. Right arm up. Hug your legs. So all the pressure now is in the left hip. So you have to hug the muscles, take the outer left hip crease back more. Pull from both feet up into the pelvis. Hug in with endurance. We're building strength. Switch your arms. Don't let your right leg drop, so keep it up. Face soft. Remember why you're doing it, don't force. Relax into it, but don't give up. Persistence. Switch your arms. Chapasana. So your right knee comes in, holds your right ankle, right hand, and see where you go with this. You can just hold Ardha Chandrasana here without this part. But if you've got this, lift your knee a little bit. Not much higher than your hip so keep it a little bit lower and then push your ankle into your foot now roll your right shoulder back more so back bend quad stretch switch your arms and reach for your right foot with your left hand now it's a tricky pose here interesting What's more interesting is the fire behind my left hamstring. All right. Exhale, release, bend your left knee, step back three feet, and then leg straight, scissor, right hip forward, left hip back, bow. Stay with it, nice deep breaths. Walk your hands over to the left and breathe. If that's too much, then back off. You don't need to do that. Breathe. Turn your back foot all the way to the left. Big pigeon toe. And then drag the right foot forward, left foot back. Scissor. You should feel that all along your left leg. You might feel it in the hips. You might feel it throughout your whole body. Your whole body is on fire. Let's just face it. 
And then Ashvatasana, you keep going and put your hands as close as you can on your ankles. Now you've got balance. How else could we make this harder? It's, it's hard enough. <clears throat> you could smile. And exhale, release. Well done. Step back, downward dog pose. Exhale, right knee forward, pigeon. Simple pigeon, but square your hips, bend your back knee, quad stretch. And bring up, hold your foot with your left hand. You're going to bring your heel toward the hip. Okay, don't give up. And don't uh, take your foot off the gas pedal. So heel to the hip. And then press the base of your thigh down, drag forward isometrically. Breathe. Now turn your ribs toward the front. From your pelvis, push down toward the floor. And all this increases the stretch. You should get the stretch in the back leg primarily. Full breaths. And release. Let's switch in one movement. So here's how you do that. Curl your back toes under and lift your back knee. So you're almost there. You got a claw strong with the hands and hug to the middle with endurance. Then push your right shin down. So now just your right foot's on the floor. Your, your knee and your right shin is up. And then you just do a little switcheroo. Pull your back toes, square your hips to the front. So stay with where you're tight and breathe into it. Don't abandon yourself, hang in there. Keep letting go with the breath while you also hug to the middle. Then turn toward the right, bend your right knee, root the right knee, base the thigh down, and drag forward, right heel to hip. Spin your elbow up if you can. Push right below the line of your toes, but curl your toes back into your hand. And the last little step is square your ribs to the front. Your ribs, they work on a trajectory toward the middle, which is toward the left. And as you do that, you can do like a little micro movement there. You'll feel deeper stretch in the back leg. Keep your right toes activated, especially the fifth toe. That's our earth toe. That would be the endurance toe. Spread the, the little toe wide. And keep the pressure on. You should have a very steady, consistent, suffering in the back leg. If it hurts, it should hurt good. Oh, it's a good hurt. All right. Excellent. Now come on your belly. Separate your hands just slightly off your mat. Come on to eagle talons. Lengthen your side ribs. Arm bones back. Hug your legs and pull from the feet up to the pelvis. Thighs back, tail in, and then come up. Head of the arm bones back. Hold. Hug your muscles so there's endurance everywhere. But that central line of your spine stays soft and melted. And the heart goes forward is you remember why you want to endure. What are you enduring for? And it's always like, well, I'm enduring for my family, for my loved ones. I'm enduring for the children. I'm enduring because I want to continue to savor the experience I'm having and to participate in life. Exhale, release, come down. Bend both knees. 
Inhale, go up. Dhanurasana. So, more endurance in your feet. Turn your feet out. Spread your little toes. Shoulders back. Now lift your knees higher. And exhale. Release. need a belt on this one. This will be our last pose. And come into pigeon. Again, right knee forward. Now, I've made this belt into a loop, and you should get at least one foot, maybe two feet. And from pigeon, we will go into a back bend using the belt. So put the loop around your back leg. Buckle should be like right in the middle, not against your skin. So you start with this shape. So look, hold inside the belt so your palm is like this. Balance is such an issue here, so squeeze your legs toward the middle. And then here's the action of the shoulder. Side ribs long, head of the arm bones back, head back. Side ribs, shoulder back, head back. And then you spin the elbow up toward the sky. So if this is challenging for you, you need two or three more inches on the loop. Make your loop bigger. But if you can pretty much go through this action here, then armpit back, hug your legs to the middle. Take your right arm up, bend your elbow, pull your armpit back, then head back. Armpit back, head back. And try to grasp the belt. This is all the further you need to go with this one. For those that have more capacity, you start to walk your hands down the belt. But I'd like you to really lengthen your spine here. The stretch should come in your upper back, not the lower back. So then you start to walk down the belt and maybe you can touch your foot or get a little closer. Lift your heart, armpits back, head back. Breathe. Exhale. Release. Very good. So I'm more interested in doing the actions of that pose rather than grabbing your foot and putting your foot on your head, which eventually. Next lifetime. Okay, but... Um, the setup in this one is also very helpful. Here we go, left knee forward. Square your hips to the front. Bend your back knee. Get your lasso ready. There it is. Okay, so these actions are very important. First, open to the bigger energy. Remember why you're doing it. Lift your ribs. Then, head the arm bone back. Begin to bring your palate back. Spin your elbow up to the sky. And again, armpit back, head back. Armpit back, palate back. Hold. Lots of stretch here. If you can go further, then yes, you have to balance. So with endurance, hug your legs to the middle. Left arm up, armpit back, head back. Bend your elbow. Try to grasp inside the loop, make it bigger if you can. Then armpits back again, armpits. It's really the key. It's the head of the arm bone must go back. Then drive your palate back, lift your heart up. So don't collapse in your lower back. You have to root the pelvis and lift your heart. Hold right there, and for those that can go more, start to walk down the belt. Hold your foot. And 
exhale, release, downward dog pose. Downward dog, oh, stretch it out. Good work, everybody. Downward dog. Take your thighs back. Move your thigh bones back. That's going to stretch your low back. Tailbone in. Walk in step by step. Forward bend, Uttanasana. Fold. Bring your hands to the back of your calves. Press your calves forward. Move your thighs back. Hands forward, thighs back. Walk your hands over to the right. Hold your right shin with your left hand. Twist to the right. Keep your left hip back. Left hip doesn't move. Inhale to center. Exhale, go to the left. Hold the left shin with your right hand. And breathe. Inhale to center, bend your knees, do squat. If this is too much for your knees, then you're gonna squat just like this. It's a good practice. Okay, so knees are wide. Keep your feet parallel, don't let them turn out. And with endurance, move the inner edges of your feet toward the floor, especially the inner heels. Even if you're not all the way down, work toward the floor. Breathe. Inner edges of your feet, inner ankles go back, inner thighs go back. Fold forward. Very good. Inhale, come up, Uttanasana, bow. And then bend your knees and come down. Shavasana, are you ready? Okay, endure this. All right, come on your back. Just let your sacrum rest on the floor and you can do a little bit of pelvic rocking here. If your sacrum were like a clock, 12 o'clock is the top of the sacrum, the tailbone's at six. You go back and forth from 12 to six. then find three o'clock and nine o'clock. Just a little bit back and forth, laterally, three to nine. And then do 12 to three to six to nine. Twice in one direction, 12, three, six, nine. And then counterclockwise, reverse. 12, 9, 6, 3. Repeat. Okay, options for Shavasana. First is a psoas release. So you separate your feet as wide as your sticky mat, let your knees touch in the middle so your knees are falling toward the middle that's a, a deep release to the psoas muscle hip flexor arms by your sides palms up the other option is just stretch your legs out straight see which one feels best for you close your eyes and breathe Receive all the benefits of your practice, the strength, the quality of endurance without forcing it. And to remember why you would want to endure. And it's usually for other people to serve something greater than yourself. 
or to experience the miracle of life in all of its simple pleasures. Just to walk in the woods, to look at a beautiful flower, to listen to the mountain stream, to watch the flight of a bird, to enjoy the blue sky, the clouds, the smell of the earth, the touch of the breeze against your skin. The feeling of safety and trust and love for a friend or a beloved partner. Allow grace to pour her light into you, showering you with blessings. The deep inner peace begins to expand within you. Turn, begin to stretch your body. And as you're ready, bend your knees. Roll to your right side. And then gradually come up to a seated position. Turn your thigh bones in. Join your index fingers and thumbs, the place where endurance touches grace. Palms down. Soften your skin, let your skin become light. And then fill yourself with the blessing of the divine. Lengthen your side ribs, head of the arm bones back. And allow a, a column of inner peace to rise from the floor of the pelvis out to the top of your head. Soften your face. Connect with the true power of life itself, combined with your intention to thrive, to affirm life, to move forward even in the face of hardship or adversity. To open up the power of endurance, conscious endurance that you give space to all of your efforts. And what drives the endurance is this deep inner longing to savor life. The 
Allow your light to exude out from you. We open to the shower of abundance. The light is so full, it overflows its boundaries. We can't keep it to ourselves. We can't keep this good feeling to ourselves. We must share it and shine it through your eyes, through your smiles. And let's let this light come through all of our thoughts, intentions, words, and actions today. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. And let's share in the experience of life. And share our light, share our longing to thrive, share our endurance. And we pray that all beings find and discover a deeper level of endurance, that we will get through. Challenges will only make us stronger. We are evolving our consciousness day by day as we take this time to practice, to reflect, and grow goodness deep inside. Let's celebrate this day with the sound of Om. Take a breath in. Endurance in me bows to the endurance in you. Namaste. Thanks for your practice. Thanks for joining me. If you would like to support Ashaya, support me and contribute, go to ashayayoga.com, practice online. There's a donate button. We do appreciate all the support. And um, thanks for practicing with me. I hope to see you in one of my, my courses that are coming up, the Blankets of Grace, currently in progress can still join. And then, hey, I have another 30-day challenge coming. It's coming June 1st. I hope you'll join me for that. It's the Ashaya Morning Practices, Pillars of Peace. It's going to be an ongoing 30-day, but we're taking a little vacation right now. So, hope to see you then. Okay. All my love. Thank you. Namaste.